right, test, test, test. There we go. So let me let me put this thing down. Put this dang thing down, man. All right, so that's a. Uh, I can't really move this camera. I wonder if I can get it to focus though. Probably. Focus. Maybe move this. Yeah, there we go. All right. So some people asked about like what these things do. So signal chain on the guitar goes from right to left because the cord sticks out the right side of the guitar for right-handed players. <laughs> so unlike Western everything else that goes left to right, guitar signal chain goes right to left. So this is the first thing, and this is just a tuner. So when I press this button, it mutes the guitar, and when you pluck a string, it's called a strobe tuner. So the little screen on there will put a note. So if I pluck the lowest string on the guitar, it's an E. And then if it's moving, if it's spinning to the right, it's sharp. If it's spinning to the left, it's flat. And then when it's not moving at all, it's in tune. So it's like a very, it's accurate to within, I think like one cent, they call it, which is like a, <laughs> I don't know if it's a hundredth of a note. It's something like that. And then this is the next thing in the chain, this green thing. It's a, what they call an overdrive pedal. And a lot of people have two of these. And one is used to get like the, there's like a, they call it a breakup where um, naturally in the 70s when you had one of these amps, they call it a tube amp. When you got to a certain volume level, the signal starts to break up and has this like really pleasant sort of almost like a tearing noise, but like softer than that. And like the harder the rock, the more it break up and the more up, up to the point where they call it literally a screamer. <laughs> so this is a very natural overdrive and I have it set really low. So if I dig in with like a pick, it will then it will like break up at the at the uh, top end when I when I play loud. So that's what that does. Plus a small signal boost. Like there's a little there's a little knob on here that turns the volume up a little bit. Next thing in the chain and basically mo most guitar players tend to play with their their uh, overdrive at the front of their signal. And then the next thing in the chain here, this little white pedal is a JHS delay pedal. It's like a very it's not like super cheap, but it's a pretty cheap delay pedal. And what a delay pedal does is that after a certain amount of time when you're playing, it will play the same note again, but quieter. And there's knobs that uh, that uh, dictate how many, time it how many time it repeats, what length, like if you're playing a slower song, you want like a slower repeat. And so on here, there's a knob on more expensive pedals. There's, a, there's another tap where you tap to the rhythm and it will change the beat, it will change the delay time. And then there's a mix, so I keep it pretty low. Um, though, <laughs> you know, there was like a fair amount of reverb and delay on what I was just playing, but the knob on there is a mix knob and I keep it about, you know, like usually lower than 25%. And then this is what's called, a, this blue one or blue green one is called a, a tremolo and they call this like a, what was called a phase shift or modulation? I can't remember, but basically it, it makes the signal go wong, 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 wong. And I, I did not have that on, but it's like a very pleasant effect, especially if you're playing like, otherwise playing chords or like certain types of music use a, a tremolo really heavily. And there's similar knobs, like you can change the mix, the depth, the rate. Um, and generally the delay goes before these kinds of modulation pedals. And then the last one here, which is an effects pedal is a reverb pedal. I don't use this a tremendous amount because this this amp actually has what's called a spring reverb in it. So there's a knob here on the amp that has that gives it the reverb sound. Reverb is the sound where the more decay or the bigger the room size in the reverb, it's simulating having sound bounce off and bigger and bigger thing. And so you can even have one that sounds like you're in a giant church. And so like that for this, like if I turn the delay way up. Um, it will sound like the echo is coming back like a second and a half later, something like that. But I have the decay set, you know, I don't know, it's about 27, 28, 29% right now, which is actually kind of high, but <laughs> when you're playing kind of, uh, I don't know, Space Cadet stuff like that, where it's like, I don't know, major happy song, whatever. I just like it. It just sounds good to me. It's like meditative. And then the last thing here, which is not an effects pedal, but it's a pedal nonetheless, it's called a loop station or a loop pedal. And all this does is when I press it, everything I play after it, and I press it again, it gets repeated. 
and it's like a really basic one um basically the cheapest loop, loop station you can get it's like 100 bucks or something and this allows me to like practice certain things so like if i'm playing and i tap i play a couple of chords and i tap this um I can play lead over the top of it. So it's how you play when you don't have a band. All right, so the amp, the amp is not that special other than I like it. It's like a very clean, it's a very good pedal platform because it's very clean and it has like what they call a lot of headroom. So what this means is you can turn it up pretty loud and it won't break up as much, but there is a point where it will start to break up but it has a very clean sound, which means there's lots of dynamics and there's a huge range of noise you can make. Um, and most most stuff I play so far, I've been playing pretty stock out of this. I do sometimes turn the reverb on there and turn it off on the pedals. And you can also simulate reverb with this amp top box, which I'll talk about now. So this amp top box, I have the volume of this amp on five. And it turns out if I put that in my house on five, my neighbors would call the police because <laughs> it's it's going to be like 110 decibels or something and it's going to be so freaking loud. Um, so the attenuator allows me to turn the amp up, which these things have old fashioned giant tubes in them that heat up and they, they have electricity running through them. They're called uh, they're called tubes. And basically, I forget what the term is, um, but basically there's a bunch of tubes in here. And there's some for the preamp and there's some for the power the power amp section and they all get when they start working they sound better and they produce a better tone and they also get that natural breakup that i was talking about so what an attenuator does is it allows you to turn the volume up which drives all that circuitry in there to a certain amperage that's higher and then you turn it down with the set top box so like this thing has a speaker volume on it and if i turn it to zero it means no sound will come out of the speaker at all and then there's basically five levels of attenuation, five being maximum. And then if I want, I can turn the speaker completely off on the amp with this thing. So I can turn this to zero, plug in headphones, and then, and then turn the headphones up. And then I can play completely silently and just practice at nighttime, right? But that's not usually what I use this for. I do use the attenuator part, um, but it's mostly a curiosity since I don't play super loud, natural uh, overdrive <laughs> very often where I'm trying to turn the amp up till it's breaking up and then use the attenuator to turn it back down. It does sound cool, but I use this thing mostly to record the guitar because recording guitar is kind of hard, especially in a crappy bedroom because you have to have a microphone here, like off center of the speaker cone. There's a, there's a, there's a cone in there and it moves the air and you, you push the, I don't remember why, but basically one of the ways to do it is you might, you put a mic very close and off center and then another one further away and it produces a stereo sound. And that's a cool thing to do, but it's like impractical for a bedroom. Cause not, not only does it sound kind of stupid cause the room doesn't have the right characteristics. Like there's, it's not, it, there's stuff, something called flutter echo and like things where if you have sound bouncing off a small room, it just doesn't sound that good. But I also can't, I want to play quietly. So this thing has a stereo output it's got, uh, it's called SPDIF, SPDIF, and it's, uh, it's like an RCA cable that I can plug into this really shitty audio interface I have called the Focusrite. And that, that's what that black cable is right here, is it comes out of the set top box, the amp top box, which is also an attenuator, and then allows you to record it as if you had two microphones on there. And it gets rid of all the hassle of actually micing the amp up. And it wouldn't sound that good anyway, because the room is bad for rec <laughs> recording an amp. Um, the other thing that's cool is that this thing has, it has a speaker modeler in it. So instead of the sound coming out of this speaker, it comes out of a software modeled speaker. And there's a, there's six presets on here, but you can also, there's like an app for it that I haven't even looked at yet. I'm just using the first one, which I think is like a four by 12, it's like four, 12, 12 inch speakers um, and it's simulating it being mic'd up. And then also, depending on where you record your amp, you can change the room size. So that's what the second knob does. So it adds a like a flavor of reverb to it if you want to as well. So I just have it on like default settings, but it's going right into a very cheap audio interface and I feel like it sounds pretty good. So anyway, that's the whole thing. Um, 
this is why <laughs> and that's a by that that's a fender stratocaster it's a like a daphne blue i can't remember if it's a professional it's like their mid-tier fender it's not it's nothing special about it but um it's very nice to play and fun to play and what i just played was on the it's called position two which is like there's three pickups they call them on uh a, this guitar and they're single coil and those are little magnetic coils that pick up the vibrations of the string the strings and so you can select between them and get a variety of different sounds like the bridge pickup sounds like country music basically and then like the neck pickup sounds more like traditional lead guitar which is the sound i was going for but in this room because i have this freaking light up here and that switch right there is a dimmer and then these monitors the pickups on the guitar pick up all the e you know the electromagnetic interference and so if you switch it to pick up the second position the interference will essentially can cancel itself out and there will be much less noise so I've got it on position two, which is a mix of the bridge pickup and the middle pickup, which sounds pretty good, but you have to like, you have to try to compensate for it for levels and like treble. You have to turn it up, up a little bit because it's a little quieter and stuff like that. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for listening. It was kind of fun. Bye-bye.